Twitch and YouTube, we are stepping it up a notch here in the round of four of the November qualifier for the fall season final. We have a very interesting matchup and things are heating up for that first place, of course, which gets to go to the final for sure. So I'm joined by Spiff once again, who has been helping me cast all of today, and I will pass it on to him to introduce our great players. All right, thank you, Knight. We're going to start over here on the left-hand side of Powderhorn Mesa, spawning in, as always, as the white Aeon Commander. It is A.A. Fox Tremelin, who has elected to go with a research station first into a land factory. Um, very similar to a build we saw a little bit earlier on the stream. And uh, Knight, whose scout is that that is currently flying over Fox Tremelin's base? The scout belongs to a player that we have just seen play. This is going to be a little bit tougher match for him. It is our blue AM commander from Russia as well. It is Osmos. He has opened up with an air factory and now is building a research station in response to Fox's station, I presume, before going into land. And we have Harvogs for Fox Jermelin. And I'm guessing pretty soon those Harvogs are going to start uh, tickling upward into the air. And there it is. Yep. Tickle, Absolutely. tickle, tickle. And uh, not going to do quite enough damage there. Barely a quarter of the health gone for that Weedoboth. And a second land factory is going to get plopped down for Osmos as that air is going to get cancelled. But he's going to be quite a bit behind on his expansion, I want to say. But Fox is actually not expanding. And we have seen that be the downfall of Fox Jermelin in a lot of tournaments and a lot of games that we've been seeing recently. Yeah, Fox uh, is a, a fan of what you might call dedicated aggression. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about that, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess I haven't picked up on it. But that is true. But I also feel like Aeon is a very dedicated type faction. You know, like, if you only have so many paths that you can go down and they don't really interlace with one another, um, it kind of ties in into the whole experimental talk we've been having. Like, you can't just go teleport and experimentals. You either go teleport or you go experimentals or you go, like, TML or something. You are pretty dedicated at that point to to what you're doing. Whereas Cybran, you can kind of go wishy-washy. UEF, you can go wishy-washy. You often mix air and land. You know, it's they're more of a um, dynamic faction. And that's why a lot of people don't like Aeon. <laughs> you mean people don't like playing against Aeon? <laughs> no, I mean, there's people that don't like playing Aeon. I'm actually one of them. I just play it like we talked about because it's a, it's a good faction when you don't practice. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of Iron Commander doesn't like playing Aeon. Um, Jaywix didn't like playing Aeon. A lot of people don't like playing Aeon. No, I mean, I can understand. I don't like playing Aeon or UEF, really. I mean, Aeon, to me, honestly, feels boring to play unless I'm going Will Find Ya or when uh, when you hit um, Teleport. But at that point, it's just fun for me. Well, only in Teleport. <laughs> it's just fun for me because, yeah, you're teleporting all around. You're microing everywhere. Like, that's fun to me. But honestly, there isn't... Build order-wise, there n is nothing that's really fun about it. All right, so we do see tanks in response to these Harwaks, which is what I've been saying should have been the case for, I forget who we were watching. I think it was Vanity um, or somebody. And Fox uh, has also made the switch to tanks. Yeah, um, definitely smart choice. I, think I don't think the radar, that. well, I, I was going to say, I don't think the radar is, I don't know, maybe it does reach the main base to see that the air factory has been turned off. Fox uh, knows the radar placements on all maps, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if it does reach just far enough. But yeah, it's interesting that he's not using the Harvog mo mobility right now. I feel like he could be kind of p punching around 
He does have three Harvogs in the back of Osmos's base and actually prompted a point defense to be built, <laughs> which is very, very good for him. Yeah, that's damage right there already without even firing a shot. Yeah. He did lose a Harvog there, but yeah, overall not bad. Osmos is going to try and throw up another one. But by the time it comes up, honestly, I think uh, Fox can uh, finish that mass extractor and position himself behind the second one out of range of the point defense. So that's actually a big win for Fox. Yeah, I think these point defenses are just premature. Like, building them right there would be fine if it was like, hey, that's the second or third time you've sent bots into the back of my base. If you're going to keep doing this, then I'm going to put up a point defense. But... As an initial reaction to this, I don't know. I mean, I guess I can kind of understand he doesn't want to send units away from the front because Fox has a lot more. But... One Ouch. Arvog is going to finish off the Mass Extractor. <laughs> Meanwhile, we do have an engagement here in the center. It looks like Osmos did grab shields on his way to teleport, and I probably... Foxtermon is going via the top route, seeing that he's already ahead in the research. Uh, but he is do choosing to do a head-on engagement here, which is not necessarily a good thing. But somehow he has so many units here, and Osmos just doesn't have enough tanks. That factory is going to go down. Yeah, Fox has gone stars as well, it looks like. And I think stars are better than shields in this situation. Oh, he did go stars. That's That's right. Okay. So that's actually a good choice, I think, also, um, if he's pushing, especially. Because now in the teleport war, it might not necessarily matter if he manages to push this out, which right now he has close to maybe like 33% more units here. Oh my god, that freaking Harvog is still alive, man. Oh, I also forgot the investment he made into the Harvog, so that's actually significant also. I don't know why I forgot, forgot about that. But yeah, he's actually behind on the teleport war then. Well, I don't know. With the amount of tanks that he's killed already, though, I think Fox has more than made up for any, uh, any diversions in his research. Like, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Bot AA. Like, yeah. he, there's a lot of dead tanks there, and they're just about all osmosis. Yeah, and Fox Tremelin is actually expanding now, so... He has more more mass, same amount of land factories, and uh, better research as of right now until teleport hits for Osmos. So we'll see how he decides to handle that. Um, there is a chance he just loses so much, but there's also a chance that he can counterpunch with his own units and just wait a little bit more for teleport and then just teleport on top of uh, Osmos's ACU. Third mass extractor did go down for Osmos, and I think he can pick off the fourth one if he just micros a little bit. Nope, he's going to pull them out. Point defense creep by uh, Fox Tremelin. We are not strangers to seeing that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, what, the fourth time today? Fifth? I don't even know. What do you mean? Point defense creep. Not just from uh, Fox, but like today, we've seen quite a few of them. You know, uh, I I feel like it's a, a standard type of play, no matter what the faction is nowadays, to to um, push with point defenses. I'd like to oh. see Fox Mel micro a little more. There's definitely room for it. That was a weird engagement from Fox. Nah, uh, he's just taking his time. Like, it, I, I think maybe you wanted him to chase down the army, but he's just content to set up, uh, you know, more and more factories as he creeps forward. Yeah. Foxtermelon has a really good grasp here of this game now at this point. Even with all these land factories coming out for, for Osmos. The research is really also uh, probably taking over Osmosis at this point on the road to teleport. <coughs> Which at this point, I don't even know if teleport is necessarily the right thing. I think just going stars and pushing this out is uh, is a way to go. If you're Fox. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Osmos has it, to hold somehow, which a teleport I think is might be might be a way. To or teleport snipe on the commander maybe somehow. He could try to snipe. He could go for a base trade. Yeah, there's a teleport underneath the shield. Fox Tremelin is in trouble here. I think he's actually going to go down. Oh, honker. Ooh, I don't know the honker. Fox has a lot of tanks here. That was a clutch honker. Holy damn. 2,000 nice health on the ACU, and yeah, the health is back going back up. All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Fox Jamelin is Fox Jamelin. You can say anything about the faction that he's playing, but he has incredible control, uh, especially on his land units. And uh, yeah, that's going to give him win on this game one of our best of two. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment for game two on Kai Labs. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone, to round four of the Serpents Open November. This is Spiff joining Knight of Misfortune, bringing you game two of this round four match. And Knight, why don't you go ahead and introduce our first player? Oh my god. Uh, I'll let you introduce that thing that's happening, but I'll introduce the white and commander on the left hand side of your screens and the map. It is Fox Melon opening up with a research station, which oddly enough might actually be bad against what his opponent is doing. Speaking of which, what the hell is going on? Well, I'm trying to figure that out for myself. On the other side of the map, spawning in is the Red Aeon Commander. It is Osmos. And he has selected uh, to send his commander and an engineer forward to build a forward base right off the bat. Um, I, I thought maybe this was going to be like a, a real, real early ACU push, but it looks like it's more of a long-term sort of strategy here. It's a fake air opening into a, essentially a triple factory rush. I like it. I actually really dig this. And I'll be really interested to see what happens here. Because Fox Tremelin opened up with a, a research station and now going into double air. Oh, oh. You know, I actually really like this for Osmos. Yeah, I definitely do too. Um, Fox needs to get eyes on this immediately oh if he's going to have it's even enough Arbogs. time. <laughs> How does he know? That, mm, that is some game sense right there, I tell you. I mean, Fox to Maryland too. Fox to Maryland also knows. He has gunships on the way. This is some incredible. I, I am I am genuinely intrigued now. I'm fully awake, sitting in front of my chair. On the edge of my chair, actually. And, um, yeah. It's going to be very interesting. Fox Romano sending an engineer to confirm what he already suspects. Actually, I don't know if he suspects this. Like, if he knows this is a triple land, like, that's, um... That's well, do these, stuff. do these guys practice together? I don't think so, no. <clears throat> I know Austin practices know, this with is... Hope, and uh, Vanity practices a lot with... Uh, Sorry, Fox practices a lot with vanity. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. Like, did he see this coming? Is this just a... Did he go blindly gamble on gunships? You know, there is a way to read the score. And... Uh, it's, it's just such an odd opening with... Uh, with a research station. I mean, I, I have a feeling he suspected that there was no air when there was no scout. And also, he saw the score jump up in the in the beginning. From, from and then an saw it drop point. back down, jump back up again. Yeah, well, I don't know if he noticed that because it's actually hard to spot when Osmo switched it from an air factory to a land factory. Um, yeah, I don't know. These bots are going to shave a lot of health off of that commander before the gunships get here. I think the gunships are just going to kill everything here. <laughs> yeah, they do They do a little more than tickle. Yeah. I 
Yeah, I think this is just gonna be a snipe. <laughs> what a weird ass game, man. <laughs> Even with that shield, no way. Interesting build from Osmos, and uh, I don't know how he did it, but Foxtermelon did it. Yeah, he sniffed it out all right. Yeah, well, 2-0 win for Foxtermelon, and an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to go to round five in uh, just a moment. Well, maybe not just a moment because we still have matches left, but uh, we'll be back uh, shortly. Don't go anywhere. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.